to campus. I apologize for the heat in this building. We're hoping that some adjustments have been made and maybe it'll get a little bit better here pretty soon. Um, I'm Rachel Lloyd and I oversee our Center for Academic Success and Advising here on campus and serve as a grant project director. And um, we're here to celebrate these top 10 students. Um, it's become a cherished tradition on our campus and believe it or not, this is the seventh annual year of celebrating top 10 students. So we're happy to be here doing that once again. Um, I would like to also acknowledge the, the family and friends of these students that we have in the audience who have supported them along the way, and our administration, faculty, and staff um, who also have challenged them and inspired them. Um, our selection committee this year um, consisted of Donna Hale, Cheryl Butler, and Lisa Bell. So we appreciate their time and thoughtfulness in, in helping to select these students. And we also are grateful for the support of our president's partners uh, for the program and any former top 10 students that we might have in the audience. I think we have at least a few. Um, okay, to introduce our theme this year, we have a brief video for you to watch. Samuel Pierpont Langley became the secretary of the Smithsonian Institution in 1887 and continued to do research in aeronautics the entire time he was head of the Smithsonian. He developed a series of small gasoline and steam-powered aircraft he called aerodromes, which were unpiloted craft. Uh, the most successful was the Aerodrome No. 5 and the Aerodrome No. 6, which flew in 1896. Langley developed a large catapult launching system on the top of a houseboat. On October 7th, at Widewater, Virginia, he made his first attempt with this catapult launching of the airplane, and it crashed miserably. A Washington Post reporter uh, quipped that it looked like a handful of mortar falling into the Potomac. On December 8th, 1903, the airplane had been repaired, and this time uh, closer to Washington, D.C., on the Potomac River, the aircraft was put on top of the houseboat again, and another attempt was made. And again, the airplane just simply collapsed upon itself upon launching, and the airplane was never attempted to fly again.
Okay, now I would like to invite this year's uh, top 10 honoree and theater major, Justin Tamplin, to introduce our keynote speaker. Cassie Fugate Kate is from Miami, Oklahoma, and intended NEO from 2008 to 2010. She was inducted into the very first class of freshman top 10 honorees in 2010. Also during her time at NEO, she served as president of three clubs, Phi Theta Kappa, Maskers Club, and the Psychology Club. Cassie majored in theater, acted in three productions, and served as the assistant director in six others. She remained on the Dean's Honor Roll both years and graduated with honors. Cassie married her best friend, Stephen Kate, in 2012, and the two had children, Kendrick and Katerina, in 2013 and 2015. After originally transferring to the University of Oklahoma, she transferred back to Pittsburgh State University and graduated in December of 2014. She accepted an adjunct instructor position to teach speech classes at NEO shortly after. Cassie considers the decision to return to NEO in her new position one of the best decisions she has ever made. Cassie credits her mom for modeling lifelong learning in her life. Jody Fugate's full journey started at NEO as a nursing major when she was 40 years old. She was a member of PTK and finished in three years. Now she is the director of the medical, surgical, ER, and ICU units at the Grove Integris Hospital and still returns to NEO to speak to nursing students. It is an honor to welcome a top 10 award recipient back to the stage as our keynote speaker this year. Thank you, Justice. And real quickly, I would like to thank Rachel and Mr. McCurley and Mary Susan for putting this all together. So a round of applause for them. When Rachel first approached me with this opportunity back in August, my first reaction was, oh my gosh, this is so amazing. And then my second thought was, oh boy, now I'm gonna have to practice what I preach to my students every day. So I'll do my best. Being a communication professional, Rachel felt it was appropriate to incorporate communication in today's theme, student leadership. Since communication is such a broad subject, I really wanted to focus on one good point. As I was lying in bed the other night, I was watching the classic Gone with the Wind. Now, I've seen this movie a hundred times, but I never really focused on the communication between the characters and how beautiful it was and how they portrayed it for that time period. The communication between people at the time was just so beautiful. It flowed like water. It was very fluent and precise. So now I find myself analyzing communication over time and completely ignoring the movie. In all honesty, if you think back to the 1800s or early 1900s, how fluid and personal communication was. It's funny to watch people trying to speak in those times or about those times or Shakespearean and they struggle. On this journey of analyzing, I noticed not only has a language change, not only has a language change, but actually the communication has changed as well. We started out with just face to face or by letter. And then it progressed to face to face, letter, or then the telephone. And then we had face to face, letter, telephone, and then email. And then a funny thing happened texting came along. Now we're slowly losing that face-to-face -face, and even so the telephone. We all have that one person, or maybe you are that person, that we can call, but you don't answer. But if I text you, you'll text me right back. In a short amount of time, it happened. Face-to-face -face, and even talking to someone on the phone became obsolete. Why? Social media. Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, all these things, you guys know what I'm talking about, be, left the original communication art completely in the dust. If I did a show of hands right now, about 90% of the room would say they had a social network. As I'm noticing this, another aspect dawns on me. 
Not only is the art of communication changing, but also the words. We have gone from word to word, to abbreviated words, to pulling letters from different words like LOL or OMG or BRB, whatever it is nowadays, to just making up words. Rachel sent me a link to a YouTube video that Anne Cruzen, an English professional, explains on TED channel that how much she enjoys reading these new words. She goes on to give examples like hangry, hungry and angry put together. I don't know about you, but I've been pretty hangry myself. And then she terms the word adorkable, being adorable in a dorky way. And then my own personal favorite that wasn't on there would be totes adorbs, which I pulled from the show Playing House on USA. My family loves it and to hate it at the same time. And I can't help but laugh at this because I explained to Rachel that my family and I do this all the time. For example, we're trying to decide something for dinner. And I'll say, okay, spaghetti or tacos? And my husband will quickly come back with spaghettos. And my, of course, my son laughs because it sounds ridiculous. But this little game that we play has helped me coin the terms for this speech. The topics of scholarship and leadership are very broad. To me, you honestly, you can't have one without the other. So let's break it down. And these are my terms, not Webster's. Scholar, to have knowledge or be knowledgeable. Leader, the easiest way to describe a leader is the phoenix rising from the ashes, going above and beyond when no one else would. When you put these two together, you get scholar, or it was funnier to my son saying it, scholar. My son tried, or my husband tried to argue that you don't need both to be a leader or a scholar. He gave the example of Albert Einstein, and now he kept to himself and whatnot. Then I simply said, okay, since you want to argue. Yet we still talk about him today. We use his methods and quote his words. As he was getting over his touche moment, I continued to explain that even if you do keep to yourself, or you are that shy person that doesn't like to stand at the forefront of the picket line, doesn't mean you're not a leader. You can lead by words or by wisdom. Numerous successors throughout time may not have stepped foot in society, but made a bigger impact than someone in politics, for example. I also explained that you may be a forefront leader, but you're going to need knowledge to do that. You wouldn't want to run up to a group that's protesting or raising awareness and be like, I'm gonna lead this group. I have no idea what it's about, but dang it, I'm gonna lead this group. You need to have knowledge to be a leader. You need to learn how to communicate properly, or maybe in your own terms, to be a leader. After Stephen swallowed his pride and he agreed that I was right, as most husbands should. As I look at the new inductees, not even knowing them on a personal level, but seeing them and reading their histories, I know we have a great group of scholars or skill leaders among us. These will be the ones that break the communication barriers. And then the ones who keep up with the times as they change quickly around us. Who knows? Maybe they'll be the one to create a new communication portal or be the one that create new words that change society. People will say you can do what you want with hard work and dedication. I say you will do whatever you want and be whatever you want with hard work and dedication. Life is going to knock you down. It's up to you to get up, have some strong words with life, and prove it wrong. The only thing that can hold you down is you. You are the generation of change. So go out and change it. Thank you.
All right, that was an excellent keynote. Very good reminders. Um, now we will move forward with awarding this year's honorees. So if um, President Dr. Hale and Mary Susan Whaley, our music instructor and um, faculty senate officer, can make their way to the stage, we will go ahead and award each of these new inductees. Okay, so students, whenever I read your bio, you'll come to the stage. Molly Brewer hails from Shawnee, Oklahoma, and is double majoring in elementary education in psychology and sociology. She is a member of the PTK Honor Society and has been recognized on the president's honor roll. As an NEO cheerleader, Molly is very active on campus. She enjoys every opportunity she has to work with children and be a positive role model in their lives. Molly is excited to have a class of her own and be a mentor to children every day. As a homecoming candidate, Molly was awarded the title of Miss Congeniality at the Heroes and Heroines Wonder Pageant in September. According to Dr. Sane Hubbard Sung, instructor for the Department of Communication and Fine Arts, Molly is a young woman that sees the importance of her service to better the community she is part of. Congratulations. Annika Carr is an agriculture business major from Fairmount, Georgia. Annika is a member of the PTK Honor Society and received the NEO Foundation Scholarship. As a member of the NEO Livestock Judging Team and an agriculture ambassador, Annika has volunteered to help with many different activities, including the Aggie Days speech competitions on campus, banquets, and improving the facilities at NEO Sinar Farm. Annika believes being a leader and a positive role model go together hand in hand, and she strives to portray qualities of both. Agriculture Department Interim Chairperson Mackenzie Nigren relayed in her recommendation letter that aside from her academic ability and commitment, Annika serves as an agricultural ambassador and an overall leader among her peers. Congratulations. Caleb Cox is a general studies major hailing from Miami, Oklahoma. He is a member of the PTK Honor Society, Phi Beta Lambda, Lambda Business Club, and the Native American Student Association. Caleb has been recognized for his dedication to NEO by being asked to serve on the Student Success Goal Team as a student representative and was recently crowned the 2015 Homecoming King. He is actively involved with his Native American tribe, the Cherokee Nation, and was selected to participate in the Remember the Removal Bicycle Journey along the Trail of Tears this summer. Caleb has volunteered for many local charities and organizations. Um, according to my letter, as a first-generation college student, he is an exceptional scholar and eager eagerly embraces every opportunity to learn. Congratulations. <laughs> Tyson Howard is from Commerce, Oklahoma, and is studying pre-engineering. He is a member of the PTK Honor Society and works as a math and physics tutor in the tutoring center. Tyson has served as a co-head coach for a local youth um, basketball team and has also helped with a local football league. He has supported his classmates by facilitating study groups for students who are struggling in the course. Tyson has also helped students by supporting them as they assimilate to the culture of the college environment. NEO psychology instructor Lori Kurtz relayed in her recommendation letter that Tyson is an outstanding leader and sets the example for others to the same level in which he lives his life. 
Congratulations. Madison Moss um, could not be with us, but we'll go ahead and read through her biography and get her awards to her later. Madison Moss is a pre-engineering major with a focus in mathematics. She is from Commerce, Oklahoma. Madison was awarded the Dobson Presidential Scholarship, the Melissa Douglas Scholarship, the Christina Bowman Scholarship, and the Oklahoma Football Coaches Association Scholarship. She is a member of the PTK Honor Society and has been recognized on the President's Honor Roll. Madison is also a member of the Christian Student Fellowship on NEO's campus. Through her involvement with the Christian Student Fellowship, Madison has traveled across the Midwest for mission trips. She has supported student engagement on campus by volunteering during Welcome Week. In his recommendation letter, math instructor Steve Dixon wrote, because of her determination and leadership skills, I certainly believe she has what it takes to be a successful student and will continue through school to achieve her goals as a STEM graduate. So let's give Madison a hand. Okay, next up, Dylan Price hails from Norris City, City, Illinois, and is majoring in natural science. He is a member of NEO's horse judging and equestrian teams, the Equine Club, the Phi Beta Lambda Club. Dylan is a natural leader who promotes sportsmanship, respect, and humility among his teammates. He has numerous accomplishments competing in the horse judging arena at a national level. His active involvement in ca campus organizations has given him the opportunity to use his leadership skills at judging clinics and reigning contests. Dylan's number one priority is his grades and he has maintained exceptional academic standing during his time at NEO. Dr. Shannon Cunningham, former assistant vice president of academic affairs, wrote of Dylan, he is an incredibly generous person, always willing to lend a hand before anyone ever asked. Congratulations. Johanna Richardson is an agriculture business major from Gerald, Missouri. She has served as Vice President of Catholics in Action and is a member of the equestrian team, the equine judging team, the equine club, Aggie Society, and the PTK Honors Society. Johanna has devoted many hours volunteering with Horses of Hope and to maintaining the facilities at NEO's Sinar Farm during farm work days. She has served younger individuals at many events that have been held on NEO's campus, including a horsemanship clinic, judging clinics, and hosting local FFA students. Agriculture instructor and equine judging coach Amanda Burroughs wrote on Johanna's behalf, she maintains high moral values and often is a role model to others based on her ability to stand for her beliefs and maintain a delightful attitude. Congratulations. Miguel Pineda Soto is a pre-engineering student from Maracaibo, Venezuela. He has served as vice president of PTK and is a member of Catholics in Action and the Norwegian Legion Marching Band. Miguel works as a tutor for student support services and is passionate about encouraging students to persevere by exemplifying the qualities of a dedicated student. Miguel has served <clears throat> the Miami community through his participation in Big Blue Day. According to chemistry instructor Randy Jones, Miguel is an intelligent young man who has learned to adapt rapidly, make new friends carefully and thoughtfully, expand his interest, and give back to NEO. Congratulations. Justice Tamplin is a speech and theater major from Frisco, Texas. She serves as the vice president of the PTK Honor Society and is an active member of NEO's Fine Arts Program and the Maskers Club. Justice was awarded Miss North Spirit during Homecoming 2014 and was recently crowned NEO's 2015 Homecoming Queen. 
Justice promotes NEO to future Norsemen by giving campus tours. She has participated in PTK's service projects and spearheaded a partnership with the Animal Shelter. According to Mary Susan Whaley, instructor of music and director of musical theater, Justice has a unique ability to interact with her classmates, displaying confidence while inspiring respect and cooperation from her classmates and teachers. Congratulations. Daniel Fontine hails from Wetzlar, Germany, and is a general studies major. He is a recipient of the Dobson Presidential Scholarship and the NEO Foundation Scholarship. Daniel is a member of the NEO men's soccer team, PTK Honor Society, and has been recognized on the president's honor roll. He works as a math tutor in the tutoring center and has worked with other international students to help them improve their English. Through his resilient spirit, hard work, and dedication, Daniel has overcome adversity and now serves other students who have shared his experience. Daniel has also served the Quapaw community in 2014 by helping the tornado victims clean up after the devastation. In his recommendation letter, Jeff Aldridge, math instructor, wrote, Daniel was as gifted, respectful, helpful, and insightful as any student I've ever had. Congratulations. <laughs> Okay, thank you, I appreciate it. Okay, let's give another round of applause for all of our top 10 recipients this year. Congratulations to you all. Um, now I would like to invite everyone to stick around for a reception outside in the lobby and foyer area, but I would like for the top 10 uh, honorees and any president's partners we have in attendance to come on up and have a, a group picture up on stage. And then you can join your families for the reception. Thank you all.